Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Back to UK politics now. The old rule is that divided political parties can't win elections. That adage uh, will surely be tested at the next election as both main parties are divided at the moment. But Conservative infighting is the more engrossing right now, which made us think we might ask, what about Labour? Is it at the start of a long march back to Downing Street or is it just a few steps from oblivion? Tomorrow, a new group is launched in the party. It's called Labour Together, that sees itself as trying to plot a path back to power. At the helm is one of the party's big thinkers, John Cruddus. He wants to find a way for Labour to re-engage with its traditional supporters. He'll tell us how to do that after we hear from our political editor, Nick Watt. <laughs> As a new dawn was breaking over London's South Bank half a generation ago, the Labour Party embarked on its longest unbroken spell in government. The weather is grimmer today and the prospect of power seems further away than ever. But after a full start, a new group has been established to try and rekindle that spirit. I'd never seen a Labour government in my lifetime. I was 17 before they came to power and in that time I watched the North West where I was growing up become an increasingly angry and divided place with huge problems of unemployment, derelict shops in the city centre and families really suffering. I don't want my baby to be 17 before he sees a Labour government and that's why I think we need to arrest this long-term set of challenges and decline that the party has had. In public, Labour has been engaged in something of a civil war in recent months with endless plots to replace Jeremy Corbyn. Members of Labour Together who've been pained by the infighting agree that he is unlikely ever to be Prime Minister. But they believe that Jeremy Corbyn is here to stay, which means the work on charting a course back to government needs to begin now, guided by Labour leaders across the country exercising power in local government. Building Labour's credibility depends on showing that Labour can be prudent in government, that we understand you know, the needs of managing budgets properly and working within the parameters that are set for us. Labour Together is at pains to say it is not forming a Blair tribute band, although its mission draws on an essential lesson from the new Labour era. Unless the party forms a broad coalition, it will never win back power. But the group does say that Labour became so disconnected in office, it now has its work cut out to win back the trust of voters. What Labour Party members wanted was something different to what had lost two elections in a row, and that's the situation that we were in. One of the great things about Jeremy is he's brought in hundreds of thousands of new members into the Labour Party. They are an asset, they are a resource. They are people we can use to connect with people out there, but we don't do it by shouting uh, at the voters. We do it by engaging with them, by campaigning with them, by delivering change on the ground. We rebuild credibility from the ground up in this party. That's the way politics works now. They were called champagne socialists, but they're clearly very incompetent. Labour Together knows socialists. the party will only secure a comfortable Commons majority if it wins back voters in Middle England parliamentary seats such as Stevenage. They finally found a corkscrew and rather perilously opened Where New Labour's 1999 success was celebrated, eventually, in some style. But Jeremy Corbyn may be a harder sell in such seats. We have a job to do to reshape the Labour Party so that it speaks to everyone uh, across the country. And Jeremy's leading on that process. You get the right person for the right moment, um, I think, often. And I think Jeremy's sort of very open approach to things will help us to reshape our party. And then where we go to for the future, who knows? While the new group is wholly aware of the weaknesses of Jeremy Corbyn and his predecessor as Labour leader, it says the era of sniping and plotting is now over. We need to stop the battles, we need to stop the civil wars, we need to get back together and focus on the people of this country and how the Labour Party makes life better for them. Sadiq Khan's recent victory in London has buoyed the party as it agonises over how to chart a route back to power. Even David Cameron was forced to pay tribute to the new mayor when they made a joint appearance on the referendum campaign trail. 
But London is not Great Britain. Winning back the country's innately cautious voters will be a far greater challenge. Nick, uh, what reporting? Well, an hour or two ago, I spoke to John Cruddus, who's leading the Labour Together group, which launches tomorrow. I spoke to him from the sunny west coast of Ireland, in fact, where he's on a break. Uh, John Cruddus, does Labour need another group to pontificate on the face of the party? We have Labour Together now, Labour First, Progress, Compass, Momentum, Left Futures, Consensus. If you if had as many votes as you had groups, you'd be uh, on your way to victory. Well, I don't quite look at it like that. I think it's uh, healthy. I mean, it's a positive contribution we want to make to the future of the party. Why do we need it? Well, we've just come off the bat of two terrible election defeats. So um, all ideas need to be put into the mix from all parts of the party and in the spirit of um, civility and goodwill and pluralism. And I think um, it will be a very constructive contribution that we'll make over the next couple of years. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn, people are saying now, Jeremy Corbyn isn't going anywhere before the next election. I, I, you agree with that, don't you? Or, or is he potentially not going to be leader by the time of the next election? I don't think he's going anywhere, no. I mean, I think actually the results of a few weeks ago have put pay to a lot of the simplistic assumptions of leadership challenges. I think we've all got to roll up our sleeves and make uh, contributions to the future of our party. We're duty bound to do so. I think we also have to respect the mandate that Jeremy's got and we have to respect the office of the leader of the Labour Party. There's a gap between the voters and a gap, and Jeremy Corbyn isn't there on all those issues immigration, how you approach the economy, welfare. These are things where Jeremy Corbyn and his supporters, who will keep him there, are just in a very different place to a lot of people we thought of as core Labour voters. No? Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. But at the same time, he has a massive mandate from the party. Um, we have a few years to try and work through a positive policy programme. I think you can see over the last few months that. You know, they're, begin they're beginning to tighten their sort of operation in and around the leadership of the party. And I think there's grounds for optimism over the future next couple of years. Yeah, but if you believe, and your analysis is, that Jeremy Corbyn is a million miles from the people who need to vote for you, just give me one reason as to why you're going to close that gap and win the next election. I, mean, I don't know if we're going to win the next election. I just feel duty-bound that all people who hold office in the party should positively con contribute to the future direction of the party. Now, I'm not underestimating in any way the difficulties we face. Arguably, as I said, we've had the worst defeat in our history. So I don't think um, I'm being over-optimistic about this at all. All I'm saying is that we all need to positively contribute to the future. Now, look, I just wonder if we could just talk about Europe a little bit, because there was a very interesting poll this morning that indicated something like... 45% of Labour voters were confused, really, as to what the party's position was in the forthcoming referendum. Does, does that surprise you, that the people don't basically know where the party stands on this issue? It didn't surprise me at all, actually. Um, if you come to my constituency in uh, East London, you would uh, have a lot of conflicting views on the ground about where the party stands, people's views about Europe. There's a long way to go. Um, it's going to be a pretty turbulent few weeks. I see from some of the polls that the Brexit case is uh, growing, it looks like, in terms of the uh, support it's, it's getting in the country. Um, so we'll see how it all sort of shakes down over the next couple of weeks. But it doesn't surprise me, no. You're not surprised that people don't know where the party stands on what is such an important issue. I mean, that's a pretty... A pretty poor state of affairs, isn't it, if, if, if people are confused about that? All I was saying is I'm not surprised by some of the opinion polling we're seeing on this European question. Um, that's not to say that the Labour Party is not united in terms of support for remaining in. It's simply to report back on some of those polls that say there's a lot of confusion out there about the Labour position. Can I ask where you are on the EU? Because it might be that the reason the public are so confused about Labour's position is that... <laughs> A lot of Labour people seem quite confused. Are you clear about your opinion on how to vote in the referendum? Yeah, yeah, I'll be, I think, voting to stay in. Um, I, I, you know, I think we've heard, we haven't heard enough about the democratic reform of Europe. We haven't heard enough about trying to challenge some of the corporate stitch-up. Um, but to me, it's just such a big bet to leave that uh, I'll be voting in favour. You really don't sound terribly sure with respect. I think you said, I think I'll be voting to stay. Do you not know how you're going to vote in this referendum? No, I... I'm... Yeah, I do know how I'm going to vote in the best referendum. I'm going to vote in favour um, of, of remaining. If you, I told you you could either have the status quo, we remain as it is, or we leave, you, John Cruddus, would vote to what? 
Well, uh, that's a false choice. I'm sorry, this is not a politician's answer, but I, what I would want to see is a positive case of staying in, but on the basis of a much more aggressive reform agenda in terms of the role of the European Commission and the democracy within the Union. Now, that, I think, is what you'll see put out in over the next few weeks by John McDonald, the Labour leadership, J Jeremy Corbyn, and I think that will be warmly welcomed across the country and will strengthen the case to remain, and that's what I would like to do. John Crudders, nice talking to you. Enjoy the, uh, the sunset there in Ireland. Thank you very much indeed.